Text animators offer a powerful and unique method for character animation in After Effects. And when I say character animation, I mean per character animation. So we can actually animate the text on a per character basis, so one letter at a time. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to apply these animators and create what looks like a, quite a complex character animation with just a couple of keyframes. After Effects ships with lots of free animation presets and these include text animators. In this video, we'll learn how to add some text animators to our text using the free animation presets. And then later we'll figure out how to customize them to suit our needs. So in this movie, what I want to do is I want to animate the text. You can see we've got these other elements animating. And instead of just animating position where I would pick it up and animate the position value coming in, what I want to do is animate the letters on a per character basis. And this is where animation presets become really powerful. Now, what I want to do is just isolate this layer so I don't accidentally click on other layers. So what I'm quickly going to do is click on this switch for each of the layers I don't want to see. And this is the shy switch. And when I click on the shy switch for a layer and then enable the shy switch up here, then what will happen is it will just hide those layers. They're still going to render, but it will hide them from the timeline. It just gives me a little bit more space. So I'm going to open up my text, open up my text property group, and you'll see we have various options in here, including this little menu here. And this is what we want to concentrate on at the moment. Now we have transform properties for the layer, as you would expect, but you'll notice if you click on here that we have other transform properties as well as others for fill color, stroke, tracking, etc. So why do we have more transform properties here? Well, it's because we can use these to allow us to animate on a per character basis, which means on a per letter basis, animating one character at a time. So for example, if we animate something that we're familiar with like position, we can just scrub the position value and it will animate all of the characters as you would expect. But you'll notice a slight difference in the display options. You'll notice there's a little X between each of the characters, including the spaces. And the good thing about this is, as well as being able to animate position as a group, we can actually use what's called the range selector to determine which characters are affected by position. So we could decide that maybe only the word drink is affected by the position value change that I've just made. And this is how we do it. We just drag the end value of the range selector so that it only includes the word drink and the exclamation mark. Now you'll notice that we have a percentage value measuring how much of the text is selected and drink is 30% of this sentence. I can also use this handle here to determine which letters are selected. And that's quite handy because it allows me to select per character. You'll notice it snaps between the different characters as I scrub through, which is a nice way of selecting them. Now, if you want to do that, um, have access to the character count down here, instead of measuring by percentage, you can go into the advanced section and change the units to index. And then when we go back up here, you'll notice instead of counting it as a percentage, it's counting the number of characters. So D-R-I-N-K exclamation mark and a space is seven characters. If we want to remove the space, we can move that in. Now that's the default setting. If you want to exclude spaces in your measurements, you can also go into the advanced section and say characters excluding spaces. But we're going to leave it on the default for now. So how do we create our per character animation? Well, we animate the start or end property. Now, if I scrub the start property, you can see that that's dropping the text down one letter at a time from the beginning of the text. If we scrub the end property, we get something different. You'll notice it moves it from the end back to the beginning. So we want the first character to drop down first. So what we're going to do is just extend our selection to the end of the text. So let's drag it out so that we have all the letters selected. And then let's set a keyframe for the start value. Then we move to where we want the animation to end and we just drag that start value out to the end so that both values are the same, a value of 20 
And if we RAM preview that, we should now have our letters dropping down one at a time, which is a really nice effect. Now, the only thing about that is I just want to adjust where they come from at the moment. They're coming from just a little bit higher than the original place. What I want to do is have them coming up from up here somewhere. So I can extend the Y value and you'll notice that once I've created my keyframes, there's no need to keep adjusting keyframes. All I need to do is adjust the position property and they'll now drop from the top. OK, so we now have the characters dropping from the top. Of course, if I want them to maybe come from over in this direction, I can just adjust the X value as well to move them over here. And now they'll come in as if they're coming from this direction. And of course, once we add motion blur to that by clicking on our motion blur switch in the timeline and enabling motion blur, we get a really nice effect of each of the characters moving in over time and blurring really nicely as they do so. So that's how to build your own text animator and apply it to your text in After Effects.